Hello, photographers, designers, and other freelance creatives. Welcome to Coaching for Creatives. I'm Laura McKay, and I am going to have a conversation with you about getting shit done. That's right. What are you procrastinating about? What are you avoiding? What have you been putting off or listing on your accountability check-in and not taking action on? Today's conversation is going to get you set up for success so that you can start getting shit done easier. How are you going to be able to change what's going on in your life and have it stop being such a struggle to work on those things that just don't fill you with joy? We're talking about those things that you just notice that you're avoiding again and again. Those kind of things like maybe it's doing your bookkeeping, maybe it's invoicing people, maybe it is doing the editing on those photos that you did but you didn't really have a deadline for. Maybe it's cleaning up and resizing the files for your design clients. Whatever it is, you are an entrepreneur. You have a list just like all of us that is like the never ending to do list. And like most freelancers, you probably feel overwhelmed, burnt out and exhausted and don't really want to add one more thing to your list. But we got to get this shit done. It's part of doing the job. It's part of doing the work. What can you do to actually get shit done in your life? First, my curiosity is please post in the comments. What is it that you usually avoid? What is the thing, that little thing in there that you usually avoid? For me, one of the biggest challenges is taking my offers and actually creating the landing page or the offer page on my website. I love what I do. I love creating powerful content that's going to make a difference in people's lives. I am so connected to the why behind the work that I do, the training, the support, the coaching, the resources that I create. I am absolutely connected to my passion and my motivation. And yet, when it comes to sitting down and designing the compelling offer page for my work, I just, it just feels like such a chore, such a burden. And the irony, I hope that's the right use of irony in this circumstance, but the irony of it is that I teach all of my students how to do compelling offers. I go through, I give them great feedback on their marketing copy and how they're arranging things and positioning it and are they targeting their audience. And yet when it comes to my own work, it's there's this cement wall of just, I just don't want to do it. And this last weekend, I had a huge breakthrough. I noticed for the very first time that I actually have a process when it comes to doing this work. And this breakthrough was extraordinary because what it did is it allowed me to reconnect to something that I, again, I share with my clients all the time, but I don't necessarily give to myself. And what I noticed was that my process usually involves a lot of inner work. Let me walk you through this a little bit. One of my core beliefs is that our thoughts and our feelings lead to our actions and the actions lead to the results. So what I find myself is the result is no landing page on my website, no offer page on my website. The actions I did not take, I did not actually do the work to build it, to, to create it in the world. And that was based on maybe thoughts and feelings. This weekend, I noticed that I sat down and I just created my compelling offer page and I spent several hours and I did the draft and I got feedback and I did the second draft and I put it out there into the world to get some additional feedback. And it was easy and it didn't feel like a burden or a should or a have to. And so that got me thinking, what was different about this action taking versus other times last week, the week before that, that I was not taking action. What was happening in those circumstances? If I go back to my core beliefs, 
thoughts lead to actions, lead to results. And I go, okay, in the past couple of weeks, I was not getting the results. I was not taking the action. What were my thoughts and my thinking? And I recognized that my thoughts were that the only actions that count have to meet a certain criteria. I had a belief or a thought that these kinds of actions count as actions, but these kinds of things don't count for action. These kinds of things count for action is getting out in the world, talking to people, doing something that's tangible that you can see as an outcome. And that I had decided in my own little brain that the action of ruminating, of allowing my subconscious, of allowing my process, the action of planting a seed and then allowing it time to nurture and grow and bloom. For some reason, I wasn't allowing myself to count that as action. Every time I would put on my to-do list or my accountability list, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to work on my compelling offer. And then at the end of the day, I didn't, I didn't have anything tangible, nothing that sort of fit this list that I had decided was the rules of winning the action game. I would beat myself up. I would feel guilty. I would, it would just feel like such a burden and a should and a have to do all of these things. And the truth was, I wasn't ready yet. I was still doing the action of nurturing the seed, of sitting with the ideas, of generating the concepts, of allowing my subconscious and my creative process time to unfold. If you are a creative, I guarantee that you have a process, that you have a way of coming to creativity, of being able to allow your genius in, of connecting with idea and inspiration, of whatever moves you through your process. You probably even have a process when it comes to doing things like accounting and bookkeeping and invoicing. My invitation to you is how can you honor your own process? How can you honor your own journey of creativity, your own way of, of connecting to your passions, connecting to those things that are going to spur you into action? What does your process look like? What does your creative journey, your internal journey look like for you? My invitation to you, because I love to have people get into action, is to take some time and sit with a pen and a paper and see if you can't write down how you access creativity and energy and motivation. If you are too burnt out, if you're too overwhelmed, if you're just feeling so stuck in the middle of all of it, I get that. It may not be that you have the ability to access that kind of introspection, self-awareness, and self-observation. I have done a previous video that's all about motivation and reconnecting to your energy and leveraging your psychological and physiological state to be able to move and step into creativity and excitement again. Check out that video. And the last thing that I will offer you is to also look at your own boundaries. And I did a whole video about the environmental boundaries, your energy boundaries, your time boundaries. What happened for me this weekend was that I gave myself some space. I expanded my boundaries to hold space this weekend. I thought I was going to have the weekend off to do really nothing, didn't have any plans. But what ended up happening is that I gave myself some space where I didn't have it on my calendar that I should be creating my offer page or I should be working on my business. I didn't have that external pressure and the constraint of all of that. Instead, I created space. And then the most amazing thing happened was that my own creative process had room to unfold. All of those seeds that I had planted, all of the ruminating and nurturing and generating of ideas came spilling out and I was able to get shit done with ease. So tap into your own brain, your own process, your own peak performance times, your own when do you really thrive and feel focused and excited. 
get connected to that and start seeing, can you make space during that time for the things that you want to, to do? Or can you leverage other times to do other things that don't, cre don't uh, require that same level of creative expression? Getting shit done with ease is about making sure that you honor yourself, your own energy levels, your own process, your own way of approaching things. And that way, when you do create a schedule or you create space, you're going to be able to pour into it and feel amazing. Okay, there's one more thing I'd like to share with you. The last piece is something that I'm going to do for myself, which is to give myself more compassion and to look at other areas where I've been shooting on myself, where I should be getting things done and see if there's a possibility to make some space, create some compassion and to allow my own process to unfold. I am Aura McKay. I am the founder of Business of Creativity, and I am your host for these Coaching for Creative sessions. I love being able to support each and every one of you. If you have questions, DM me, post them in the comments, reach out, please connect with me. I am here for your journey. Have a great week. Thanks again for joining me live.